So yesterday's video on the Eastern Conference was over 24 minutes. That being said, I hate long intros. Y'all read the title. Let's get right into it. Where at number 15, I have the Portland Trailblazers, led by that bum Joe Cronin and his sorry ass team. Joe, I hate everything about you and your team, including that bum ass DeAndre Ayton, that trash ass Scoot Henderson. You want to be petty and not send Dame to his preferred destination? That's what you get. It's called karma, and you got a sorry ass team because of it. Led by Scoot Henderson coming into his second year here. He wasn't great as a rookie after being the second pick in the draft coming out of the G League. Was looked at as an exceptional playmaker. And while he was okay at that, he really wasn't good at anything else. Although he did get better the second half of last season, he probably will build off that. But he just wasn't as great as some of the other rookies in his class, at least in their rookie season. But they do got Anthony Simons at the two spot, who is a very good player. There's been some trade rumors regarding him. I'm not quite sure why. He is a little bit older than Scoot Henderson, but not that old. Although I will agree the fit with him and Scoot isn't necessarily great, especially when they do have Shaden Sharp, another great athletic guard coming in the second unit there. But at the three spot is Denny Abdiha, who was their big offseason splash in a trade with the Washington Wizards. He's a very good 3 and D player, but not a needle mover, but he's fine as is Jeremy Grant, who's obviously a decent player, just wildly overpaid. And then they do have DeAndre Ayton at the five spot, who is a soft ass bum and is also wildly overpaid. You can see their second unit's not that strong. The only couple of different players here is Delano Banton, who I remember shot like one of 17 in a game last year. They do got Shaden Sharp, who we mentioned. He will be a good player in this league. And Donovan Klingon, their first round draft pick from this past season, the 7-1 center out of UConn. He was a decent shot blocker and rebounder there. I personally just think he's a little bit too slow to succeed in the NBA, at least right away. So I'm not a huge fan of him. They do got a couple intriguing guys in the third unit here. Tamani Camera had a pretty good season for them last year. Chris Murray is nowhere near as good as his twin brother, Keegan Murray. But hey, if he can get close to his twin, he's a little bit intriguing. Jabari Walker, I think, has some potential too. And obviously, Robert Williams has always been a decent center when healthy. He's just never really been healthy. So while the Portland Trailblazers have a couple good pieces, their other talents and young talents not as good as the rest of the West. So I have them in 15. One spot above them, I do have the Utah Jazz, who are currently starting, according to ESPN, Keontae George, Colin Sexton. They have Lowry Markkinen at the three and Taylor Hendricks at the four. I'm not sure that'll be the case, but they rounded out with John Collins at the five. I'm not sure I agree with Patty Mills in the second unit here. I don't think he'll play much. I think he's a nice veteran leader for their young guards, which they have a lot of them. Then even mention Isaiah Collier, who was their late first round pick this year. I like him a lot coming out of USC. He can get to the rim. He's a decent enough three point shooter, although not super consistent in college. But I do look for him to get a little bit more run than Patty Mills. I think Mills will play a similar role to Taj Gibson, who we talked about yesterday, who's in Charlotte. Just a nice veteran for a lot of these young guys to learn. Because in addition to Keontae and Colin, they also got Bryce Sensabaugh, who is another good young player. Same with Cody Williams out of Colorado. I think both of those guys can contribute right now, uh, obviously with Cody being a rookie. And then you got Jordan Clarkson, who will be a nice trade piece to a contender. They'll likely try to move on from him. And Walker Kessler, who kind of didn't get the improvements you would have liked to see since his rookie season, but it'll always be a solid, nice backup big in this league. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how Larry Markkinen performs coming off of his, what was he, an all-star two years ago? Was it last year? Uh, I don't remember time flies, but he did get a big extension. So it'll be interesting to see if he can sort of improve upon that. But one spot above them, it pains me to say, I do have the New Orleans Pelicans who made a big splash this year, getting DeJounte Murray. I'm just not sure it's enough to put them above the rest of the teams. I'm not using ESPN's depth chart projector here because it wasn't updated. They only had like a couple guys there for some reason. Maybe that's because it was just announced today, Herb Jones might start at center. So obviously this website isn't updated either. But that being said, that's a bit of an awkward fit. He's only like 6'7", although he is an exceptional defender. But they got a lot of nice pieces, man. They got DeJounte Murray, obviously just acquired from uh, Atlanta. CJ McCollum's a very good shooter. Zion Williamson, if healthy, is one of the best power forwards in the league. And then if you look at the bench here, Trey Murphy is really that guy that stands out. The only reason I have the, the Pelicans so low is because there's a lot of questions surrounding Brandon Ingram. 
for some reason, they don't want to hold on to him. Well, I guess it's because they don't want to pay him. So he'll likely be moved. There's too many questions there for me to put them any higher than some of the other teams. But I do like the roster, even if they trade him, because Trey Murphy will kind of slide into that starting three spot, I think. And he's an exceptional shooter. Obviously, on the bench, we didn't mention Jose Alvarado, who's a decent rotation piece. I don't love Jordan Hopkins. People are very high on him, but I just think he's too much of an inefficient shot chucker at this point. Uh, and shout out to these bigs here. Obviously not Daniel Tice. That dude is still a bum from his Celtics days where that dumbass reporter said he was even with Bam. But anyways, I do like Eve Missy. He was their second round draft pick this year, and he's a very raw prospect with not much offensive game, but he is a guy that can be a rim runner and shot blocker right now. So I do think he'll get a decent amount of minutes in the absence of Jonas Valanciunas, who is now in Washington. But moving on here at number 12, we have the very nice and young upcoming team in the Houston Rockets. I love the Rockets roster. I think they are very deep. Obviously, the starting lineup is super well-rounded with Freddie and Jalen in the backcourt. You got the villain Dylan Brooks at the three. Jabari Smith Jr., who took a nice jump last year. He'll be your four, nice stretch four. And then Alperen Shangun, future all-star, maybe even this season, he'll be at the five spot. So not much of a weakness there in the starting lineup. And then some of these bench pieces are awesome. Amon, Amen Thompson had a great rookie season, was getting your triple doubles, really looks to be the, the true backup point guard. Obviously, the shooting concerns are concerning, but now they do got Reed Shepard at the two. The, the uh, third, third pick in the draft out of Kentucky. That boy is a sniper. He looked great in summer league. I think he will make this team substantially better. Tari Eason had a great season last year as well. Still young. He looks to be better. And then Steven Adams, who was not healthy last year, will now be healthy. I know it says day to day, but he should be ready to start the season and be the backup big. And he's always been very solid wherever he goes. And then in the third string, a couple of these guys are decent too. Cam Whitmore's had a very nice summer league in preseason. Jeff Green will obviously always be a rotation piece in this league. They got a lot of nice young pieces, man. And a lot of those pieces were improving last year. So if they can build upon that, I do think it'll be good enough to be 12th in the West, which I believe is a spot lower than they were at last year. Just a lot of these teams will be better. So I think they'll be good, but probably not as good as the Clippers, who I have at 11. Obviously, that's a little bit of a drop off from last season. They did lose some key pieces, including Paul George, and replace them with a couple pieces as well. Like Derrick Jones Jr., you can see they got him at the starting three. The rest of it is pretty similar. James Harden at the one, who's on a big extension with Terrence Mann, uh, Terrence Mann and then DJJ, Kawhi at the four, and Ivaka Zubac. Kawhi is already questionable. I saw there was some concerns on whether he'd start the year. That's the biggest reason I have them so low because just as a lineup, it's pretty solid. Obviously, Chris Dunn off the bench. He was very good with Utah last year. Norman Powell has always been great. Batum killed the heat last year with Philly, so he's still got a little bit left in the tank. And I'm not so sure on Mo Bamba, to be honest. Uh, and obviously, Amir Coffey is, is okay. Uh, as far as third stringers, they, they don't have nothing, though. I don't believe in KPJ or Kai, Kai Jones at all. They're trying to do these reclamation projects, the Clippers, and usually those, those don't really work out. Uh, I do see P.J. Tucker as the fourth string here. They had already confirmed he's going to be away from the team while they try to move him. But they got a solid roster when healthy. They likely won't be healthy. That's why I got them at number 11. Number 10 is my biggest take of the video, which is the San Antonio Spurs at number 10, who was like 14 last year in the West. So this is quite a big jump from them as they do get into the play-in. Their starting lineup is looking like Chris Paul, Devin Vassell, Harrison Barnes, Jeremy Sohan, and Victor Weminyama. So you love that they added a couple vets because they were way too young last year. They, of course, got Harrison Barnes in the salary dump from, uh, from Sacramento to make way for DeMar DeRozan. But now they got a great versatility in the starting lineup. A true point guard, maybe the, the truest point guard in recent history. Great shooting there at the two and the three. Uh, obviously, Jeremy Jeremy Sohan's a versatile defender, and then Vic, who looks to dominate the season and will very likely make an all-star team. The bench, of course, is lacking. Trey Young or Trey Jones, excuse me, is a great point guard. Stephon Castle has played well in preseason and the summer league. And obviously, Keldon Johnson's always been a decent player. But Zach Collins is mid. Julian Simpane is a bit of an inconsistent score. So they really don't have too much here. Uh, not much in the third or fourth string uh units here, here either. But I don't want to underestimate the impact Chris Paul will have. 
At his age, there's obviously concern about how much he will play and stay healthy, but his facilitating is still elite along with his IQ. And now that you're giving him literally the best weapon that he's ever had. I know he played with Prime Blake and DeAndre, but now he's playing with a 7-4 alien. We've already seen him connect in the preseason and it's been scary. Quite literally, Wembenyama's catch radius is like 14 feet in the air. And now you got a point guard who can pinpoint the ball in that area. I don't see how teams are going to stop that. I think they're going to have, I think Wemby specifically is going to have a monster season. A lot of that because of Chris Paul. And I think that's good enough to put them in 10th. Next at number nine, we do have the Phoenix Suns who have been playing very well to start the preseason. Not that it means a lot. You can see their starting lineup here is headlined by their new guy who actually they got on the minimum contracts, which was an absolute steal. In Tyus Jones, who has one of the best assist, of, uh, assist to turnover ratios in the league. They really needed a true point point guard now they have that but i do have some concerns about their defense in the top three because that is tyus jones devin booker then bradley beal i think that's a bit of an awkward fit although offensively they should be okay especially when you got kd at the four obviously a uh, superstar elite still at uh, still at this age and yourself nurkic is decent as well so offensively they'll be very very good defensively i have some concerns and then the second unit isn't super strong here although grayson allen's a great shooter royce o'neill's a great 3d player and mason plumley's also been a fine backup center i guess fine we can call him fine uh i do like some of these guys in the third unit too i guess i should say monty morris is all is also a very good true point guard uh, and ryan dunn was literally like the defensive player of the year in college he has zero offense but hey, I'm talking about this team can't defend. That can def that kid can defend. So maybe he gets some run and helps out some of those other guys on the defensive end. It'll be interesting to see, but not the deepest team and has too many questions for me to put them any higher. So I have them at nine. At number eight, I do have the Los Angeles Lakers who I debated putting them even this high because obviously their two stars are aging. Not sure how much LeBron is gonna play, although he hasn't looked like he's lost a step. Anthony Davis was exceptionally healthy last season, which scares me. I, I hope he can keep that up, but obviously he has his injury history as well. But the starting lineup is, is good. I mean, D'Lo is good, although they've been trying to trade him forever. I know the fit's awkward, but he's still good. I feel like he's a, a little bit overhated at this point. Austin Reeves had a good year, and so did Roy Hachimura. Obviously, as a Heat fan, I love Gabe Vincent. If he can stay healthy this go around, he'll be a good piece for them. They got a couple young guys, and Max Christie, well, I was going to say a couple young guys. Max Christie is. Hopefully, he can get a little bit better. Uh, he's an okay shooter right now. Uh, but Cam Reddish is not that young. Well, he's not that old, but he's kind of had ample chances in this league to prove he's a rotation player. Hasn't really done that yet, although they do have him as a second string on the Lakers. And Jared Vanderbilt's a very solid backup defender. And the third string, it has Bronny James, who will not be a rotation player unless LeBron wants him to be. But I do want to point out Dalton Connect, who was one of my favorite players in the entire draft. And I think he will have an excellent season and really an excellent career. I'm a huge fan of, uh, of him as a scorer out of Tennessee. They actually got Christian Wood as the four string here behind Jackson Hayes. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, but both those guys were okay in their minutes with the Lakers last year. Uh, and I have them at number eight. One spot above them, I do have the Golden State Warriors, who people have a lot of questions about just because they lost Klay Thompson. But I got to admit, I like the guys they replaced him with. They got a starting lineup of Steph Curry, AirPods, Brandon Pozimski, and then Andrew Wiggins at the three, who was dealing with a lot of personal stuff last season. So maybe he can look, I mean, maybe that's a reason for why he wasn't great last year. I don't know what the exact issue was, but basically I'm willing to give him benefit of the doubt that he can sort of bounce back this upcoming season. And then obviously Kaminga, who had an awesome year last year, and Draymond Green. So I do have the Warriors a bit higher because you could see they got some great young talent here. In addition to Trace Jackson Davis, who will be their backup big. You obviously got Gary Payton in the second. DeAnthony Melton's a great defender. You replaced Klay Thompson's shooting with Buddy Heald, who's also a great shooter. And Kyle Anderson 
Anderson, who had a good year last year with the Timberwolves. So because they have a lot of talent, I think that's kind of what's needed to play well in the regular season because you never know with guys like Draymond and Steph Curry at their age, a lot of wear and tear on their bodies. Maybe they don't try as hard in some games, but you got the young talent to kind of make up for that. So I do think they'll be good enough to be seventh. Moving on to number six, we do have the Memphis Grizzlies, who of course missed the playoffs last year because of all the injuries that they had. Obviously, John Morant missed almost the entire season, but they had a lot of other guys miss time as well. The starting lineup's phenomenal though. John Morant, although he did injure his ankle in the preseason, he's only listed as day to day, but you got Marcus Smart, who's a pretty decent two-way player. Desmond Bain, phenomenal shooter. Jaron Jackson Jr., a very good uh, defender of the four spot who can obviously stretch the floor. I'm not personally a believer in Zach Eady, and I also don't think he'll actually start right away, like ESPN says, but we'll see what happens. A lot of people are high on him. I'm not in particular, but I do love the other four guys along with on the bench, GG Jackson and Vince Williams. Those guys I think will have decent years just because they got so much experience last year because everyone was hurt. They got a lot of run as starters to, to end close games. And I do think that experience will be kind of invaluable. And also we saw them in the summer league and they were awesome. Particularly GG Jackson was great. I really, really like what he can bring to the table from an offensive and defense standpoint. He has great size. The shooting is improving. And I think he'll be a great rotation piece. And they got some decent guys on the bench as well. Like Luke Kennard has always been a decent three point shooter. Santi Aldama is a rotation player. Brandon Clark used to be, but I don't know what happened to him. Uh, and shout out to Jake LaRavia. They got as the fourth string power forward. He also balled out in the summer league. So maybe he'll get some run this season for the real squad. At number five, I do have the Timberwolves who will fall off a little bit after their, what, third, finished third in the West last year. Be, I do think they will hurt losing Carl Anthony Towns, but they still have the depth, I think, to be a top five team. Mike Conley was great last year and healthy. He's also getting up there in age, so I hope that he can continue a, a relatively close level of play that he did last season. But they're going to go as far as Anthony Edwards takes them. He's their superstar, and he's super young. That's why, really why I have them so high in the Western Conference. I don't have to overthink it. But Jaden McDaniels is a phenomenal 3-and-D three, uh, three and D player as well. Uh, maybe not so much 3, although he was hitting at times. So we'll see how that goes. But he'll always be a great defender. And I hate the front court of Julius Randle and Rudy Gobert. I do not think that will work. I think Rudy Gobert is a bum, has always been a bum. And I think Julius Randle is a, is a playoff bum, but this video is regular season, so that's irrelevant. Just the fit between those two is obviously not great for shooting reasons. Nas Reed is obviously phenomenal coming in the second unit, could win six men of the year, but maybe they end up starting him at some points just because they realize Nas Reed is a better fit. But of course, they got Dante DiVincenzo, who's a great piece off the bench, Joe Ingles as well, even at his age, and then Nikhil Alexander Walker, aka Na in order, was great for them last year, especially as a defender and Rob Dillingham is already balling out in the preseason so although I think they got slightly worse losing Cat they do have the superstar talent and depth to still be top five but they I like I said some front court issues will keep them from putting me any from, from me putting them any higher I do have the Denver Nuggets ahead of them who don't have great depth they lost Bruce Brown the year before they lost uh, uh Contavious Caldwell Pope this offseason that's why if you look at the bench here outside of Russell Westbrook, it's not great. Obviously, they're riding a lot on some of the young guys there like Julian, Julian Strother, Hunter Tyson, and Peyton Watson. Uh, but it's not about that. It's about that starting lineup of Jamal Murray, Christian Braun, MPJ, Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic. They have Nikola Jokic, probably the best player in the league. Don't got to overthink it. I do have them as fourth in the Western Conference, just not any higher because of some depth issues now i do have the sacramento kings with a much improved record from last season the year before they were really great last year they kind of dropped off so i do think this will be a bounce back year from them very very well-rounded starting lineup with De'Aaron fox at the one who is borderline superstar at this point they have keon ellis at the two i'm not sure the kings will actually do that he is improving three-point shooter, but I think they might rather have Kevin Herter there if healthy uh, and maybe Malik Monk, but they probably want to keep Malik Monk off the bench. But whether it's Keon Ellis or Kevin Herter, doesn't matter because they got DeMar DeRozan at the three, Keegan Murray at the four, and DeMontis Sabonis at the five. 
I love the pickup of DeMar DeRozan for them. As a Heat fan, I really wanted him. But what scares me most about the Kings is the late game talent that they have. De'Aaron Fox and DeMar DeRozan are two of the best clutch players in the league. And that team is going to win a lot of close games. And obviously, you got DeMontis Sabonis there who can clean up anything, any misses on the rebounds, an exceptional passer. I think that offense is going to be fast. I think that offense is going to be great. I think the defense might leave a little bit to be desired. So maybe they won't be a great postseason team. But defense, of course, doesn't matter as much in the regular season where it's all about offense. And in addition to those guys I mentioned, they got hella shooting. Between Keegan Murray, Keanu Ellis, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, they're obviously awesome. Although the bench obviously leaves a little to be desired. But I do think they have enough talent in the starting lineup to be top three. Plus, they're very young. They're going to gun for the regular season record. Not record, but, you know, most wins that they possibly can because that's what young teams do. So I have them at number two. At, all right, number three, because at number two, I do have the Dallas Mavericks, who have who I'll probably pick is to be the MVP of the league in Luka Doncic. Obviously, that means at number one, I have OKC. It'll be tough for Luka to win MVP over Shea if Shea is number one. But regardless, I think Luka will win MVP this year. Usually your top three team if you win MVP. So I got the Mavericks at two, who are also exceptionally well-rounded in that starting lineup. With, of course, Kyrie at the two. Klay Thompson, it's Klay Thompson, their new pickup at the three. If healthy, I think that's a great fit there because he's an exceptional off-ball player. And their two starting guards are pretty ball-heavy. And the same with P.J. Washington, very good off the ball. They do have Daniel Gafford as the starting five, which means that Derek Lively can come off the bench. We know what he did last year. He's awesome as well and looks like he's improving already with the ball in his hands. Might even try to stretch the floor a little bit. Who knows if that's been fluky or not. But even outside of him, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, who's a very, very good off the bench scorer. Maxi Kleber is a very consistent backup big man. And Quentin Green, uh, Grimes had some decent run with the Knicks as well. Uh, I also see a couple new pickups like Najee Marshall, Dante Exum. Uh, Najee Marshall was okay with New Orleans. Dante Exum has had his ups and downs. Uh, and shout out to Jaden Hardy, another young player I think can improve. But Really, with the bench, you're looking at those top three guys there, Maxi, Lively, and Spencer, with a very, very well start, uh, round, well rounded starting lineup and a potential MVP in Luka Doncic. So, for that reason, I have them at number two, which leaves the young, who was already a number one seed last year, but still improving team in the Oklahoma City Thunder, whose starting lineup is currently listed as Shea, who might win MVP also. The new pickup, Alice Caruso, who's one of the best point of attack defenders in the league. One of the most versatile and well-rounded young stars in the league in Jalen Williams. One of the most versatile defensive big men in the league in Chet Holmgren. And then some actual size with a true solid seven-footer. Another new pickup in Isaiah Hartenstein. Obviously, OKC was the number one seed last year. They had a phenomenal offseason picking up Caruso and Hartenstein. Most of their young talent is only improving. I don't see any reason why they're not number one again. Once again, another team with no weaknesses in the starting lineup. They have the star go-to guard to go to late in games. They have the, the help scoring-wise. They have interior defense. They have perimeter defense. Uh, just an overall sensational squad with a very good bench, too. More shooting off the bench with Isaiah Joe. Casey Wallace can do a little bit of everything at the backup point guard spots. More perimeter defense in Lou Dort. Uh, and then they got Jalen Williams and Chet as some of the backup bigs here too. Uh, but I do like some of the other guys they listed as third stringers here. Kenrich Williams, the other Jalen Williams, both those guys, uh, and even Aaron Wiggins, both those guys have shown that they can be legitimate rotation pieces in the NBA. So you're looking at a team that's easily nine or 10 deep with some very solid talents, MVP caliber player, no weakness. And for that reason, I think that they're number one in the West again. Anyways, this video is looking to be exactly as long as yesterday's video, but I hope y'all did enjoy. If you did get to this point in the video, go ahead and comment. Uh, comment the same thing as yesterday. Comment Kasha Johnson for MVP. Uh, that way I know y'all some goats and you stay to the end of the video because uh, I do greatly appreciate it. While you're doing that, leave a like, subscribe if you're not already. Really trying to build uh, this channel and the subscriber count by talking maybe some non-heat centric stuff so i hope y'all did enjoy it. let me know down below and of course comment where you think i got what you think i got wrong what you think i got right i'll be reading everyone's comments so i'm curious to hear what y'all think as well 
that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. So peace out, everyone. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Slash. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.